enough of that. Fucking love this DOT machine, man. Anyway, welcome to Gummy Spare Room. A lot to get in 10 minutes. Well, okay, where are we going to start? We're going to start with... Ah! Okay, so last video, said I was having a clear out. I had uh, quite a few people with an interest in this one. Um, only thing with this one, if you're a new player, this might be a little bit daunting for you. Well, not so much now. Uh, what I had in it before, I had a very, very high-end grade tournament board. You had about 1,500 settings and your own settings that you could do on your computer. And it had ports you could plug in here and you could plug ports in there. And um, with it also being a side feed, you have to know how to set the hopper up if you're going to run at those ball speeds. Like uh, this, um, this BT rip clip here has got my own custom um, software in it uh, that was done by John Soster from Key Action Sports. What it does is it makes the, um, it pulses the rotor. I mean, it's a standard thing now in the Empire rip clips, but that started years ago with um, Soster done that, and it worked absolutely perfect for my system. But the only thing is, because you're feeding from the side, um, the size of the paint gets really important. If you've got small paint and you're feeding too fast, it will push the paint past the detent, yeah, so you need to know when to slow the hopper down and when to speed the hopper up. Also, for the carousel that's inside, this is, uh, that's spring loaded, it has a certain amount of spring pressure on it and you can change that spring pressure, so you also change that spring pressure to match the size of the paint that you're putting into the gun. It's nothing more than buying a box of paint, going down to your local paintball site and just shooting on the range all day, trying different setups, writing the settings down. Fuck me, I'm really anal, aren't I? <laughs> but that's how you get to know a gun inside out. So, look, this is, this is what the coup is. Let's say you join the army, right? You've got a year of training before we're even going to give you a gun. We're, you know, we, we might give you a wooden parade gun make you run around with that, but we're not giving you live ammo, you know, you've got six, eight months worth of training before we even put you on a gun, boy. We're not giving you a gun if you don't know anything about it. This happens in paintball all the time, uh, especially with high-end guns. High-end guns need to be set up, they're like Formula One cars, uh, I do use that acronym or not. Formula One cars, race bikes, every time we go to a race circuit, we look at the track and we have a setup for that track whether it be gearing, carburation, it might have a lot of heels in it, it might not have, it might have a lot of left hand bends, it might have a lot of right hand bends. We're gonna set the bike up to match. That's the same with paintball guns. But um, what I have done now, because um, I went through all my iron boards and all I've got here basically is a box full of old fucking knackered iron boards that I can't guarantee are gonna work. Now I can't sell a gun if I can't guarantee it's gonna work. So, um, I've done the old um, mechanical. Yeah, baby! And uh, quite clever this one. As you pull the trigger, to keep the trigger nice and light, the valve inside rocks with the trigger. Because a, um, a trigger moves through a fulcrum, right? But the valve itself has just got a straight push rod, which only travels in a straight line. So it's really not good to have something that's travelling through an arc pushing a rod that can only travel in a straight line. So the pair of them now work together like this. And it makes the trigger really, really light. Uh, this is also, um, uh, it fires from a closed bolt, which is very unusual for an iron. Irons always fire from an open bolt. So when you gas the gun up, the bolt comes back here, yeah? the round drops in, you pull the trigger, the bolt pushes the ball forward, and at the same time, right at the last second, lets the air go. Ball goes up the barrel, blah, blah, blah. With this one, the bolt is forward, like an autococker, right? It's forward. You pull the trigger, and the bolt comes back, picks up the round. When you let go of the trigger, the bolt comes forward, and at the last minute, fires the bolt. So this actually fires on a trigger release. Um, most people think that's crazy. If you're in a high-end target rifles, um, most Olympic class 25 metre target rifles fire on the release. Not on the pull, on the release. I know that's odd, but it's actually more accurate and you have more control over it. 
So uh, let's put this one to one side. 150 quid, yeah? No, you don't get the bottle. But I do have a spare bottle. It's out of date. Uh, we could have a bit of a haggle because this, with this little peanut bottle on, it's fantastic. You'll get 600 shots out of this. I, I had 750 um, at Tipman Challenge, but we were only running at 250 feet a second. But remember, this is an indoors gun. It's for playing indoors. So it's for getting around all those little corners. And just, this was the one I had the camera on. <laughs> so I can see around corners. I had a TV screen on my wrist. So I could aim the gun over walls, around corners, and look at the TV screen that was on my wrist. So I went on to make them for uh, quite a few guys in service. Really cheap, man. I made them out of baby monitors, of all things. And they were robust, and they worked perfectly. Battery-operated, rechargeable. So uh, let's put that to one side. Now, the chap um, who I was talking to about this ballpark has finally said, look, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty new to paintball. He's never had an electronic marker. So which I said, look, mate, I could be an absolute prick and sell you this gun. And then walk away and have nothing more to do with you, but I can't do that. It's just not me, right? So he's finally realised that that's not the gun to him. And then I think I may have actually put him off electronic markers. There's nothing wrong with electronic markers, as long as you keep it simple. OK. Oh, go. Whatever. Um, do, 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 do. Hybrid. And you can have this with an all-singing dancing board. You can have a plain board, you can even have a board that doesn't have any eyes on it. Uh, this is brand new, and again, it's bolt out the back, so you just put an allen key in here, undo this cap, pull it out, and the whole bolt comes out in your hand. All you have to do then is take a fluffy, push it in here, pull the fluffy out the front, put the cap back in, go and play. Um, I'm thinking 150 quid with uh, a black art board and um, 120 pound with a vibe board and that is bargain of the century because these are absolutely fantastic. I have made, um, I've made about 30 of these now and I have sold every single one and ironically um, three quarters of them have gone abroad. And half of that have gone to the States. I've got an American product that I'm selling back to our um, American chums over the pond. You fucking love them, mate. Because you just put paint in it, put the air on, switch it on, pull the trigger, go play. That's all, that's all you do with it. Yeah? And it's got more modes you can shake stick out if you want them. Now, what else have we got for you? Um, Alex. Hey, <laughs> So Alex from Fat Bob. Remember this one with a pesky little leak? Well, he had that pesky little leak again. And uh, he duly sent the gun down to me. And um, as soon as I gassed it up, absolutely no leak whatsoever. Now, I'm not saying it didn't have a leak. Let's not go there, okay? But um, obviously, um, I've run the gun with a bottle that's 850. I've done this. Hello, I'm Professor Hansworth. Some people will know who that is. <laughs> Okay, so I've done the stethoscope and all that. I even used, because uh, I've got my DAT machine now, I even rigged up a really sensitive electronic microphone and swept that over it. What else can we do? So we've taken all the gun apart. Everything's absolutely fine. I've changed the O-rings as a matter of regard anyway. So the other thing I could do was actually leave this charged over the weekend and see if there was any pressure loss from the system. Now... What I've done, um, we're not talking about pressure loss from the bottle. What I've done is I've charged the system. Remember, your Lux holds one shot in here, right? And that one shot has been in here for the entire weekend. So I cannot find a leak on this gun. I've tried absolutely everything. And uh, it's absolutely perfect. So we'll be getting this back into the post for Alex. And seeing as Alex shoots, he's getting so sexy. Well, I'm just about to run out of time. So until um, next bit, we'll see you soon. Ta-da. Bye-bye.